Okay, what we're looking at here is a Heathkit Model RF-1 signal generator. This was the immediate precursor to the IG-102. Um, not exactly certain of the, of the date of manufacture, but I'm going to put it uh, you know, like around 50 to 64, somewhere in there. It was at a time when uh, Heath was owned by Daystrom. As it says, it's so right here in the bottom of the unit, so uh, I'll do a little research on that for you. But it's in uh, nice looking shape. It's clean. Not many scratches, if any, on the uh, on the panel. Case looks pretty good. It's been given a new coat of paint. Uh, there was some bare spots on the metal originally. Not a perfect paint job, but it's not bad. What I'm doing right now, I've got the uh, the unit connected up to this um, Hewlett Packard 5345A, and we we're measuring the frequency. And what I'm going to do. Go ahead and turn this light off here so it doesn't disturb us. Alright. Should make it easier. Yeah, that's easier. Right now we are on channel A, which um, is supposed to go from 100 kilocycles to 320 kilocycles on the outer ring. So right now I'm set for 100 kilocycles, dead on. And what I'm measuring is 100.4. Kilocycles. Let's go ahead and take this thing up to the mid-range. We're giving a, right now. What we're doing is uh, is comparing the vernier to the uh, digital measurement and just kind of getting an idea of accuracy on this thing. Okay, right at the moment I am uh, approximately mid-scale. We should be reading 17 megacycles. Excuse me, 170 megacycles on the same band and we are reading right now 171.5 if I was to go to 170 I could nudge this thing a little let's just see where we go alright that's about as close as I can get it I don't know if you can see where we're at, but we are just a little bit to the left of 170 on the dial, and we're reading 170 there, so we're not talking a sixteenth of an inch at most. Let's keep going. Full scale would be 320 megacycles, approximately at that point, and we are reading 319.2, so extremely close percentage of error there. Let's go ahead and take ourselves back down again. And uh, we'll go to the next band which is 310 to 1100 kilocycles. So this would be the second band down. We are at the moment or approximately on 310 here on the dial as close as I can see it. And we are reading 309.86, about as close to 310 as I'd expect to get. Let's go ahead to mid-band, and that would be approximately 55, that would be 550 kilocycles. And we are reading 555. Let's go ahead up to uh, full scale, which should be about 1.1 megacycles. 1100 kilocycles, whichever. And uh, that looks to be it right there. And what I am seeing is 1.09 megacycles. 1.1, 1.09, very close. Small percentage of difference there.
All right, let's go to the next band. This would be band C. And band C would be again on the outer ring. So we are starting at approximately one mega cycle. That's what that's telling me. And I am seeing 1.002 mega cycles. Kind of hard to beat that. Let's go to mid band. That would approximately 1.7. Right there. Light. There you go. And what we're seeing is 1.72. Again, very close. Let's go to maximum. And this would be 30. Uh, 3.2 megacycles. It's 32 on the dial. We're getting 3.18. Very close to 3.2. Good again. All right, uh, band B is second band down. Lowest point on it is 3.1 megacycles. We're reading 3.11 megacycles. Let's go to mid band on this. It's approximately 5.5 uh, megacycles. And we're getting 5.59 megacycles. And then take her now up to full scale. This would be uh, 11 mega cycles, and we are reading 10.9. All right, next band. Let's take her down. Band E again is on the outer ring. Okay, we are reading approximately 10 on the dial. And we are reading 9.988, 9.99 megacycles. Very close. Let's take this up to mid band, approximately uh, 17. Right about there. And we got 17.2. Very close. Full scale should be 32. And that's about it there. Perfect. And finally, band F. This is the least accurate of the bands because it uses a, uh, a homemade coil that's adjusted by bending it in and out. But it is uh, band F, and that's on the inner and inner ring here. All right. So on the inner ring, I'm reading uh, approximately 32, and there we go. All right, we got 32.88, and we're starting out at 30, 32. Good. We'll go to mid-band uh, on the inner ring. Uh, let's go to 60. It's close enough. All right, that would be 60 here, and we're reading 62. And then full scale would be 110. That's approximately at that point, and this is reading 114. So that's a, our worst case, the highest frequency on the entire unit, but close. And uh, actually, as, a, as an error percentage, not that bad. Uh, over most of this uh, ranges on this thing, I'm, I'm going to guess, without calculating it, that we are well within 3%. And at this point, we're probably somewhere 3 4%, something like that. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the scope get an idea of what the output looks like as we step through these uh, frequencies again. Okay, what we're looking at at this point, we're on band A, we're looking at the 100 kilocycle, this is the lowest frequency on the unit, 
And that's what our waveform looks like at that frequency. Let's uh, make it just a little easier to see. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the dial and we're going to observe the, the frequency as I raise through it. All right, we're approaching mid-band. That's about mid right there. And then we're going to the end of the dial at this point. Right there. All right, that's at uh, three, 320 kilocycles. Let's take her back down again. All right, now we're going from 310 to 1100. We're at 310 mark. Going to 1100. Mid band and then up to the upper end. That's the upper. Let's uh, adjust our range. Here we go. Band C. Uh, let's get back down to this, the low end. Okay, this would be from uh, one mega cycle up to 3.2 mega cycles. All right, we are right now approaching mid heading up to the upper end at about now. This is our most efficient bands in this case. It's about the middle of the unit. Okay, let's take ourselves back down again. We're on band D at this point. This would be uh, running from 3.1 going to 11 mega cycles. Alright, we're going up. We're about mid-band right about now, and then heading up to the upper end right now. And we can see we've gone up in efficiency. I'm going to turn down my, uh, I'm going to use my attenuator, turn down my signal strength a little bit. And let's raise up our horizontal. Here we go. And band E starting at 10 mega cycles. We're going to go from 10 up. Right now we're going towards mid mid band. And I can see we're getting efficient, so I'm going to cut down my signal strength. That's mid band. And going towards the high end. Put my signal strength down again. Okay, that's the high end right there, so we are at 32 mega cycles. Let's take her back down again. And finally, band F. And we're starting at 32 mega cycles, and we're going to work our way to 110. Approaching mid band right about now. And then heading towards the upper end of 110 mega cycles now. That would be the maximum there. And I can give you a little better look. There we go. Excuse me. There we are. Uh, let's get a little more brightness here. That's 110 mega cycles. And again, looks pretty good. So we've we've scanned uh, from 100 kilocycles up to 110 mega cycles. You've seen the waveforms. Plenty of signal strength. Um, and uh, we track the um, the frequency very well with the uh, with the vernier. Once again, it's a nice looking unit. I'll provide a, a, a manual that will encompass the circuit. Might not be for the RF1. I have to verify whether I have that, but uh, the circuitry between the RF1 and the IG102 are identical. And so you really don't, I don't think you'll have a problem using either. But if I can give you the RF1, I will. 
But there will be a manual. There will be a set of test leads with this. Uh, Gator clip test leads. Uh, 50 ohm BNC connector. Oh, I, I forgot to point that out. I did add BNC connectors. I removed the, uh, the old button microphone type connector that was on there. These will allow you to use the modern uh, leads. They're easier to get on eBay. They're relatively inexpensive and you'll be able to get a variety of different uh, adapters and such for it. So much better to have that. Um, not much else to... Oh! One flaw in the ointment with this unit. Um, <clears throat> beautiful RF output. Tracks very well. Clean. Uh, there is no modulation coil. The, uh, the modulation transformer that should be inside this unit is missing. The original owner, somebody along the way took it out. I wasn't told it was missing and when I bought it, it, it wasn't there. So you will not be able to get the 400 hertz modulated tone in this thing. Uh, and you can't modulate an external signal with it either unless you are able to come up with the uh, modulation transformer if you happen to have a unit that's not working that you can steal it from and mount it in here. It's not going to be hard to do. I think there's only three wires involved. And a couple of screws and you could have the whole thing back the way or um, in most cases you're not going to miss it but uh, wanted to make sure you're aware of that. So RF wise excellent modulation no so uh, happy bidding uh, it will be starting out at, an, at quite a, a cheap price and uh, I'm sure somebody will be happy and, and uh, be a lucky winner thanks a lot see you again